morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Fellow Freedom Plaza residents. I'm so happy to see all of you here this morning. For those of you who didn't get a brochure, uh, we've run out. Uh, I told them there'd be a big crowd, but they didn't understand how big was big. But they will be bringing us more brochures, and uh, I'm sure Lisa. <laughs> okay, Lisa, there was somebody back here was asking, but if you didn't get a brochure, you are you're welcome to to put your name on a list that Lisa will start, won't you, Lisa? Thank you. So you are all here today to hear about the Tampa General Program called Hospital at Home. I first heard about this program over two years ago because I am a, a member of the Tampa General Patient and Family Advisory Council. Tampa General, as you all know, is the leading hospital in the area, and, and as such, their primary concern is with the patient, and the patient voice is extremely important at Tampa General, and we have a very large patient and family advisory council to make sure the patient voice is heard. I had a routine outpatient procedure at Tampa General nine years ago, and didn't like something I saw in the fine print of one of the documents they gave me to sign. Those of you who know me would understand that. So I wrote a letter to the head of the hospital. I didn't think it was respectful of seniors. Well, the next thing I knew, I got a phone call from the head of patient experience and the head of anesthesiology jointly on the phone. I didn't understand that if you write a letter to a a hospital complaining about something, they have to address it with some pretty senior people. So after they explained to me that this was a form that came from the National Association of Anesthesiologists and the chances of getting the wording changed were slim and none in my lifetime, they asked if I'd like to be on this new patient and family advisory council because they figured anybody as difficult as I should be on their side. <laughs> and I think Lisa and Angie probably understand how that works. But at any rate, so over the years I've been a member of the council, and for the last year I've been co-chair of the council. And when I first heard about hospital at home, I said, I know a home where we have a lot of people who would rather be home in the hospital and it's called Freedom Plaza. And we would be a great teammate for hospital at home. So, I started lobbying for the hospital at home group to come to Freedom Plaza and include us in the program. But there were only three other hospitals in the nation that were accorded the privilege of having this program and Tampa General wanted to make sure they started slowly, started very close to the hospital to make sure everything went well. I kept telling them, everything goes well at Freedom Plaza. We've got great staff, we've got 24-7 EMTs, we've got meals, we've got everything you need for, from a partner to make this go well. Well, eventually, they started to believe me. And today, I have the director of the whole program, Tiffany Massey, and Eric Quinn, who's a member of the program, physician's assistant. And they have come to tell us all about hospital at home. Tiffany? Thank you, Sarah. That was a wonderful introduction, and she's right. 
I met Sarah just a few months after I started in my role as an administrator working with Eric and the team. And while introducing the program or reintroducing the program at the PFAC uh, committee, Sarah reached right out to me and said, please can we have this program extended to the Freedom Plaza community? So for the past several months, we have been working together with Lisa in creating today. So I'm super excited to meet all of you and to share our program with you because as she says, it's, she's right. This program is perfect for a community like yourselves. You can not only you know, be sick, but you can be sick and still be in your home and receive the same level of care that you would have received if you were at Tampa General. So I'm gonna go through some details. I just wanna give a quick background on myself just so you all know who's speaking to you. So uh, my name is Tiffany Basie. I have worked with Tampa General for about 10 years. I uh, previously have been a nurse practitioner. I still see patients uh, occasionally. My training has been in the emergency department so this is a very different uh, world for me, the inpatient medicine world, but it's been really exciting. It's a wonderful team of people. Eric and I are gonna share with you all the members of our team so you guys know who's taking care of you and kind of the expectations that you, that you have of when, uh, when we come to your home. So I'll proceed. Um, this is basically an overview of our program. Forgive the font size, it's quite small, but we'll be sure to, to clear all the details with you. So, PGH at home is an inpatient admission back to your home. So what I, what I mean by that is that when you come to the emergency department, you have to meet a certain level of care. So you can be OBS, observation medicine, or you can be inpatient medicine. Traditionally, inpatient medicine people are in the hospital for more than two days, or you have a disease that we think, or that really the government thinks, requires an extended period of time in the hospital. If you have something that you know maybe you need a day in the hospital for, you would be in an OB status potentially, and at this time, we cannot accept OB status patients because we're an inpatient level of care. So just to get that through. So the other thing is, is that um, it's not home health, right? So there are a lot of home health agencies out there and, and teams out there that will provide home health care to you. This is not home health. This is a hospital level care that's delivered to you in your home. So you'll see this, this fancy car here. That's how we come to you. So, we work with our partners and we've created a vehicle, we've created all of these kind of internal things that we use um, within our hospital at home. So, so you know, so the community knows that we have this program, that's the car that we deliver your hospital to you in. So it's, it, we, use, we use some technology, that's the other thing. We use technology and, and you know, even myself, you know, sometimes I'm like, I don't understand all this technology so we're gonna go through that. We actually brought with us the technology device that we will use to monitor you while you're, while you're admitted at home. So we'll be able to pass that around or, or if you have questions after this presentation, you can come up and touch it and feel it and ask questions. We're happy to, to, to share with you anything you know, that, that we can. The other thing is, um, is that there's a, a, a desk or a, a room, a very small room, of people who monitor you, right? So, so when you're in a hospital, you're, up, you're hooked up to leads, and there's a monitor usually in your room that transmits all of your vital signs, and then there's a desk at the nurse's station that transmits all the vital signs. It's the same concept. The device that you're wearing that we put on you, that Eric, in fact, puts on you, is linked to a to a monitor in our in our command center we call it, and we can watch we watch you 24/7 all day long. If you if your device pops off of you, we know it. We'll contact you sometimes unless unless you quickly put it back on. Um, if vital signs are transmitting maybe differently than they had been, we'll contact you. And Eric will go through all of that with you. So just because you're at home doesn't mean we're not watching you. 
right? We can see everything that you're doing from a, from a physiology standpoint. So how does it work? So right now, you have to come to one of Tampa General's emergency departments. So we have three of them now. We have one on Davis Island. We have one in the, brand, in the Brandon area uh, called the PGH Outpatient Center or the Brandon Healthplex. And we have a third one that's on Kennedy. Those are all of our three emergency departments. You have to be seen through an emergency department in order to be enrolled into the program. That's not our decision. Um, that's CMS's decision because this is kind of a, a new model. So that's one of the requirements that has to happen. So unfortunately, if your primary care doctor thinks you need to be admitted, today they're not able to admit you directly into our program. You would have to come through our emergency department. <coughs> you can come into our emergency department, you can be seen by our team, and if we can resolve all of your immediate needs, the team communicates with the hospital at home team, and then Eric and his team, they get involved. They'll be reviewing your chart, and then they'll come to your bedside. I'm not gonna go into that because that's Eric's expertise, and he'll tell you all about how that happens. The other way that you can come into our program is if the emergency department needs to admit you to the brick and mortar hospital because maybe you need a CAT scan that you weren't able to get in the ED, or maybe you need an MRI, or maybe you need to see a consultant right away. You would go into the hospital, the team would notify us that if when everything is resolved, they think you're a really good candidate to be able to come into the program. So they'll get us on, on board early We'll watch you through our charting. We may even come to your bedside in the emergency department and introduce ourselves to you. And then offer the program. You can say, no thank you. Or you can say, yeah, sure. When I'm ready, I would love to go into the program. Then we'll follow you in the inpatient status in the hospital. And then the moment you're able to transition out of the hospital to continue your care, we'll do that. Now, the, the other thing is, is that, like Sarah mentioned, distance. There's a, a few restrictions to the, what we call it the waiver, the CMS waiver, that has to be met. So you have to have a particular type of insurance at this moment in Medicare and Medicare Advantage, in Florida Blue, in Cigna, if you come out of the emergency department, all, all are eligible. So if you have any of those insurance types, which you don't have to pay attention to that, we'll do that for you that meets insurance eligibility. The other one is distance. Now, the reason why the distance is a, is a criteria is because you still need to be admitted to the hospital, even though you're at home, so we have to be able to get to you in a reasonable amount of time, should we need to, and sometimes we have had to. So they say the, the CMS waiver is about 30 to 40, minutes or drive time, you know, we take, in, we take into consideration traffic, right? We don't want you to be so far away when we know it's bumper to bumper to get to you. So we take that into consideration. And I'm happy to say that this area, this distance is within our zone. So we're, so, so it's taken a little bit of time, but we've, we've gotten there. So now that's why we're here and we're able to share this, this service with you. So this is kind of the patient journey. So you come into the hospital, we screen you. We say, do you want to participate? Some people don't, like I mentioned, but now you all know, so hopefully if, if you're eligible, we'll get you in. We send you back home. If you're not able to get home because maybe you don't have a ride, we have solutions for that, right? So we'll, 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 give, we'll do lifts. We, can, we allow you to go home with your family or back home with your family. Um, have we done have we done ambulance back home? Yeah, we use AmeriCare. And other AmeriCare, trans perfect. Ambulance transportation. Yeah, so we have we have options to get you back home um, if if you're if you're able to. Um, the other thing is is I'm sure you're wondering well who sees me other than the computer? So we deploy patients to or we deploy uh, uh, providers and nurses to your home. And again, I'm going to let Eric talk about that. He knows all of those details far better than I do, so you will be seen multiple times throughout the day. 
And then we can do labs. So, so let's say you have an infection on your skin and we have you on antibiotics and we wanna, make, we wanna check your labs to see what they look like. We actually draw your labs here. We send them back to the Tampa General Lab and we result them. If you need to have other diagnostic studies, we're getting to the point where we can arrange those pretty seamlessly. So if you need a CAT scan, you need an X-ray, if you need something, we help you get that. If we're not able to meet that, then we bring you back to the hospital and we, we get that service back at the hospital. And then discharging. So we're really proud of the care that we deliver to our patients. We, you know, you may be admitted to our service in your home, maybe a day longer, but that's because we really take time because we can right now. We take time resolving your questions. We make sure that your medications are, are, are accurate, right? We make sure that you understand how to take your medicines. We make sure that you can get your medications refilled. If you need to see a specialist, we work with you to get you plugged in to the specialist that you need. So we, we really, we have, I don't know, a 4% readmission rate, which to, for, for those of you that don't know hospital readmission rates, that's excellent. Um, so we are really, really proud of that and we take your care very seriously and we make sure that you're successful when you are discharged from our program. And then, um, you know, if you need follow-ups, we, we also help arrange those follow-ups in transportation so that you're successful after you are done with our program. And to be honest, we've had a couple of repeat patients. So people that are in our program who unfortunately become sick again, they wanna go back into our program, right? So Eric's gonna get into some of the, the diagnoses, right? So we can't take all diagnoses. We can't take all types of patients because the care that we deliver is, very, is not very specialized, but it's kind of confined, right? We don't have all the resources that a hospital has. But we certainly have a ton, and Eric's gonna go through that as well here in just a little bit. Actually, do you wanna go through that now? Yeah, of course. Sure. Definitely. Well, um, just a quick little background on myself. My name is Eric Quinn, I'm a physician assistant. I've been at TGH now for about 15 years. Um, been a PA since 2006 and uh, graduated um, from Drexel University in Philadelphia. Um, I've been in uh, critical care medicine, um, in surgery, and now over the past few years, uh, working in internal medicine with our amazing hospital home team. Um, so as far as the um, diagnoses that we see, really anything that we can safely manage in your home is we'll take you home if you feel it safe and you feel it safe and your other doctors that are caring for you. So those common diagnoses are pneumonia, patients with COVID, patients with uh, blood clots, um, patients with urinary tract infections, cellulitis, CUPD, CHF, um, congestive heart failure. So, um, we can safely manage all those in your home. We can bring out oxygen if you don't already need it, if you don't already have it at home. Um, we bring out IV antibiotics. We can bring out IV medications if you need um, uh, like a diuretic, like Lasix, if you have congestive heart failure. Um, and our team will be there 24 seven available to you. Um, you're, you'll see the nurses um, about twice a day, um, if not more. So they'll usually come out sometime in the morning um, and then sometime in the evening to deliver the same medications that you would have gotten in the hospital. Um, we'll be monitoring you, like Tiffany was saying, through our um, virtual platform so we can see your vital signs in real time. So we'll be able to see your blood pressure, your heart rate, your temperature, your oxygen level, and also see a one lead EKG. So like Tiffany was saying, if there's any abnormalities um, that we're concerned about, we may reach out to you to let you know, are you feeling okay? And if there is any concern, one of our team members will then come out to see you or if it escalates and needs to come back to the hospital, we will arrange for that very quickly. We have a partnership with the EMS uh, in the Tampa Bay region so they can get you back to the hospital very quickly, but um, that has not happened, happened very often. Um, most of our patients are very successful um, and do a great job in the home. Um, as far as what else we can provide. So we also provide physical therapy. So the physical therapists that work at TGH, they're integrated in our program. So if we feel that you have trouble with ambulation or you previously had home health, um, we will substitute that while you're enrolled in our program because we can't do both of those at the same time. So for those patients that have home health care set up prior to being enrolled in hospital home, 
our physical therapists or our respiratory therapists or our nurses will come out and provide the physical therapy to get you stronger or do that wound care or whatever it may have been that you were getting home health care for. And then as soon as that you are discharged, then we would resume your previously in place home health. Um, we have respiratory therapists that can come out. Like I said, we can provide oxygen. And some of the things, like Tiffany was mentioning, that we can't currently do. So if you're requiring a blood transfusion or a continuous infusion, um, like IV fluids, other medications, that we cannot do at this time. But we can provide um, twice a day, up to three times a day, with certain uh, IV medications, um, IV antibiotics, wound care, or hydration of that. Um, and there's many more um, medical therapies that we can provide, and we're looking to open it up. And we're working with other um, medical companies to be able to provide those resources so we can safely take care of you in your home. So, do you want me to go through kind of how the, the steps of how we want to roll someone? Okay. Um, so basically how it works, and Tiffany kind of gave an overview of how we enroll our patient in our program. So in the beginning, because we were fairly new, our team was screening for patients based off the criteria, the distance, insurance, making sure it was safe. And then we'll either usually reach out to that attending physician that's caring for you in the hospital. You may also have consultants like a heart doctor, pulmonary doctor, infectious disease that's also following you. And then at that point, we'll come into your room. We'll basically tell you about the program, um, see if you're interested on all the things that we talked about today. And if you are interested, we can usually get you enrolled within 30 minutes to an hour and get you home right away, where I know sometimes the discharge process, which this is not a discharge, this is just a transfer. You have to think of it like you're transferring from one unit in the hospital to another unit. It just happens to be the other unit is your home. So we can get you home pretty quickly, um, whether it's your family um, or we provide transportation services for you. Um, we do encourage the consultants, if you still have an active heart problem or an infectious disease problem, we do encourage those consultants to stay on board and oftentimes they will. So you will see them virtually, um, a physician. Sometimes they will come out to your home, um, but you will always see the nurses, the physical therapists. Um, they'll be coming out to your home at least twice a day. And then the providers, whether it's physician assistant, um, our attending physicians that are in our program, Dr. Chang and Dr. Barris, as well as um, our other uh, nurse practitioners in the, in the program, they may see you in person or they may see you um, through a virtual platform. So while you're enrolled with us, you'll actually have an iPad, so the iPad um, serves two purposes. It transmits the signal um, from the, the platform that we have to monitor your vital signs. And you don't really need to operate the iPad. I know that can be a little difficult to do myself as well. Um, but you just basically need to keep it plugged in kind of nearby you. And the other purpose um, of the iPad is for us to do the virtual visits. And when our nurses come out, they'll basically set that up and then they'll alert me that you're ready to be um, to have your visit, and then I'll sign on, and we'll have a discussion, see how you're feeling. Uh, and we do have a lot of um, technology that allows us, where I can actually listen to your heart, because um, the nurse will have a device where she can put the device on your heart or in your lungs, and I can listen to your breath sounds. Or I can look into your ears, because there's a specific camera. Or I can look into your mouth. Now, if I re require, um, to be on site, then I will come out and see you if there's an acuity change, you're not feeling well, there's concern that you may be worsening. So at that point, one of the physicians or one of the advanced practice providers will come out and see you. Um, yeah. Um, what else do I want to say? We, we can pause here temporarily because we're going to kind of go through what it would be like, you know, to see Eric um, or one of our colleagues in the hospital, and, and I'm going to volunteer to be the patient. Um, and then we're also going to kind of do like a little bit of a skit for when he comes to, the, to your home and, and what that looks like and the kinds of things that he's going to talk about to just kind of give you an example um, of, of what that would be. Alrighty, we can add, we can answer some other questions after. We just wanted to to go ahead and kind of go through um, how the kind of interaction that you would have with Eric uh, if you were in the emergency department. 
with regard to the device, which is this little tiny little puck looking thing. So we'll yeah. go ahead and take this. Yeah, so how it would work, like I said, I'll either get a consult or a referral or I, I'll, our team will identify you. Um, at that point, um, I'll send a message to that attending physician. Um, we have reviewed um, Mrs. So-and-so's uh, case. We're interested in possibly approaching her to see if she may be interested to get a role in the program. Um, let me know if you have any questions, concerns, and we'll get back to you and let you know. So at that point, um, myself or maybe one of our care coordinators will go into um, the patient's room and we'll just introduce herself. So I'll say, hey, Ms. Tracy, how's it going? Hi, uh, my name is Eric. I'm one of the physician assistants. I work here at the hospital. So I work with a program called TGH Hospital at Home. I'm not sure if your um, attending physician has mentioned it, um, but they sent us a consult and thought that you might be a great candidate. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the program, but how are you feeling right now? I'm okay. I don't feel so well, but I'm okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so basically what hospital home is, it's inpatient hospital level care. So the same care that you're getting right now from the doctors that you're seeing and the nurses will transfer you at home safely. And our doctors, our nurses, our care coordinators, our team will come out to your home. We'll care for you just like you're here and provide excellent care. We'll be able to monitor you through one of our uh, virtual platforms. And what this basically is, like I said, it will monitor your blood pressure, your heart rate, your oxygen level, your temperature, EKG. Um, and we can change it in increments of every 15 minutes, every 10 minutes, or every five seconds. So we can see that in real time. So usually we'll have it on five seconds if the patient is fluctuating in their oxygen level or their blood pressure. So I'll just then at that point ask, what, do you have any questions or might you no, be interested sir. in the program? I understand all of it, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so at that point, I would just say, would you be interested in enrolling in hospital? Absolutely. Okay. So tell me a little bit about what's going on. What brought you into the hospital? Well, I have diabetes and high blood pressure, and my doctor told me that you know I needed to get some uh, additional medications that required me to stay in the hospital, but I don't want to be here. I want to go home. I have a dog, and I love him. His name is Alfred, which is true. Um, <laughs> And I'd like to be at home, so I just want to see what this device is and in, 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 in how you put it on, because it seems very small and not that important. <laughs> definitely. So I can definitely show you how to do that. Um, so what you'll basically do, it's a little, a little sticky patch, which looks like a little flower. Some of our patients call it the flower. So this just, this just peels off. And it just goes right over the center or just the left of the center of your chest. It'll just go like right here on my chest wall. Just like that. And then that, that white stays and then this is in the center of it. And it just just click, clicks right in. Um, we will provide replacement patches so if it falls off. Um, our nurses, again, will be out to your home so if it does fall off. Um, you can take a shower with this. That was my question. Can I yep. shower? You can. can it get wet? So okay. the only thing you need to do, um, there's just little prongs. You just need to pull them back just a little bit. And then this little device, the puck just pops out. And then you just put that to the side. The sticky patch can stay adhered to your chest. And you can shower and then just dry that off. And then you can put it right back on. And we understand that patients are going to take showers. Um, they may step out to go to the bathroom, go get their mail. Um, but the other thing that I didn't mention that I wanted to say, while you're enrolled in our program, you have to remember that you are still admitted to the hospital. So while we encourage you to get up and walk around if it's safe to do so. We don't want you to go into the community, to go to the mall, to go to the movie theater, or the grocery store. But can I come to the Freedom Plaza event still? I think it, it depends, but probably no. Just you'd probably be better to stay in your house, especially if you have an infectious disease or anything like that. You don't want to spread to other people. That's fair. Um, so what we'll do, um, do you have um, anyone that would be able to pick you up? I do, Sarah. Okay, and who's Sarah? Sarah's my friend. Okay, she's Sarah's gonna bring me back home. Okay, well, I will give Sarah a call. Sarah, are you able to pick uh, Ms. Facia? Okay. <laughs> All right, so one of our care coordinators will also be up, um, and they'll bring up a wheelchair. They'll help get all your personal belongings, answer any additional questions you have. Um, we're gonna keep your peripheral IV in place right now. We'll talk to your nurses here so they understand that you're being enrolled and transferred, not discharged. Um, and then we'll meet um, your friend outside the front. We'll bring you to the, with the wheelchair down to the front entrance. 
and we'll help you into your car. And then our nursing team will be out this afternoon to see you and take great care of you. And if you have any other questions, please let us know. Our phone number is here. Um, I have my business card that I will give to you. So you okay. can reach out to my so cell phone. I can call you every hour if I need to. You can. I'll be available. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, that's really as simple as it is, to be honest. We, we do all of the background checking and making sure that you are gonna be successful and that you are receiving the right care in your home. And we won't offer the service to you if we don't think that you're gonna be successful. So that's really important to know. We want, we want everybody to be safe and receive the care, the right care that, that you all need. So um, we're gonna leave these devices up here um, for you if you just wanted to touch it and feel it. It's very small, um, but it's mighty. So um, we're also gonna stick around up here if you guys had any other questions. We can come to you also. Uh, so just raise your hand and we can come over to you. We can divide and conquer and try to answer as many questions as we can. Um, so thank you all so much for welcoming us here and listening to the program. And I hope I don't see you, but I hope we see you at, back at home. Thank you so much.